So we've arrived at a weak basis. We're going to say what makes a weak base, how to calculate pH of a weak base. So pH of weak bases. Here we've got a little cartoon. So B is my base and there's a water molecule and a weak base is going to try and grab one of those H pluses off a water molecule. First going to say what makes it a weak base and then talking about the calculation, going to define a new equilibrium constant Kb. Then we're going to derive this equation, which hopefully looks quite familiar in terms of being similar to the uh, equation we need for working out the uh, H plus concentration in a weak acid, but this time OH minus concentration is equal to the square root of Kb times that base concentration. Then we're going to use the pH plus pOH equals 14 or pKw to actually work out the final pH. Okay, so uh, what makes a weak base? Two types of things which are a bit different. One I'm going to say is an amine, the other is a partially stabilised anions. Just think about amines. Amines have got uh, nitrogen atoms in them. Those nitrogen atoms have got lone pairs. The lone pairs are not particularly tightly held, not as in uh, oxygen or fluorine or chlorine, because nitrogen isn't so electronegative. So that lone pair is more available to go and bond to H plus. So, that H plus. so therefore this uh, nitrogen atom is more basic than an oxygen atom or a chloride ion or something like that. So that is a weak base. Uh, another example would be uh, an anion which is partially stabilised. So if we have a think of a CN minus, that uh, lone pair is partially stabilised on that ion. Uh, if we think of this in terms of the pH scale, pH one mole solutions, if we have uh, the strong base, it has OH minus ions. If we have uh, the neutral anions that we have in weak acids, nitrate and chloride, they don't, uh, they're neutral, whereas if we have these uh, weak bases, NH3 as an amine, CN minus, uh, they will have a pH somewhere between 7 and 14. Okay, uh, just to extend this a little bit further, uh, I'm going to say what makes a weak base a conjugate base of a weak acid. So if we have a weak acid such as phenol and we take off an H+, plus, subtract H+, plus, that will leave you with... Uh, uh, phenoxide ion, so O minus, that there will be a weak base. So this is a weak acid, becomes a weak base. And then we could do something similar with uh, ammonia and ammonium. So here's the ammonium ion, which is a weak acid. Take away the H plus to give you NH3, that will be a weak base. So we're sort of jumping from uh, weak acid to weak base, depending whether or not you've got the H plus. Okay, quite a lot on this slide, but um, hopefully looks familiar to the weak acid calculation. We're going to define Kb and then we're going to derive this equation. So if we have a weak base, uh, it can react with some water in the solution to form a, a little bit of BH plus and some hydroxide ions, making it basic. So if you have a look at our pot of solution here, we've got an awful lot of water around, quite a lot of the base molecule, it might be the NH3 or the CN minus, uh, and then every now and then, or just once in this case, uh, we have formed a BH plus uh, ion and an OH minus ion. So that's occurred a little bit of the time because it's a weak base. If we define Kb, that'll be the concentration of products divided by reactants. So BH plus times OH minus divided by concentration of B. But if we then have a look at the relative amounts of BH plus and OH minus, they will be the same. So therefore we can substitute in the place of BH plus another hydroxide, OH minus. So we have OH minus squared over concentration of B, multiplied both sides by the B, then uh, switch around and take the square root, gives our hydroxide concentration of um, square root of Kb times the base concentration. And we can use that original base concentration if the concentration of B has dropped only very slightly, which it will have done if Kb was uh, quite a small value, which usually it would be for a weak base. Okay, let's uh, go through an example so that perhaps this mathematics starts to make a bit of practical sense. Calculate the pH of a 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed solution of NaCn minus. Sorry, NaCN, Aq, so that will contain the Cn minus ion, and the Cn minus ion will react with small amounts of water to give you HCn and OH minus, and uh, Kb uh, is given here as 2.04 times 10 to the minus 5. So using this equation for the OH minus concentration, we're going to put in the Kb value, 
and we're going to put in the base concentration, multiply them together, take the square root, that gives the concentration of the OH minus ion, and then to work out pOH, we're going to do minus log of that, which comes out as 3. We know that pH plus pOH equals 14, so pH is 14 minus pOH. 14 minus 3 is 11. OK, so just to review here, the pH of weak bases occurs when you've got amines or partially stabilised anions. Uh, the equilibrium equation which you're interested in is a base uh, reacting with some water to give uh, BH plus and some hydroxide ions. The extent to which this occurs is uh, given by the value of Kb, where Kb is the concentration of the uh, BH plus and the OH minus divided by the concentration of the B. In the case where this uh, value is small, Kb is small, uh, this approximates to the OH minus concentration being equal to the square root of Kb times B. This we can then therefore use to work out the concentration of hydroxide ions if we've got the Kb value and if we've got the base concentration. Then once we've got the OH minus concentration we can work out pOH by doing this minus log of it. Then we can work out pH by doing 14 minus the pOH. So quite a few steps to working out the pH of a weak base. Okay, so that's it. We've uh, talked about what makes a weak base and how to calculate the pH of a weak base.